All right. In my photography career, I, I think it's safe to say that I've taken photos of at least three different planes. I know, impressive. I've taken a lot of plane photos and I enjoy taking plane photos. <laughs> I like action in my photography. I don't think I hit an artery. That's part of why I've spent so much time doing street photography. And I like to take photos of these giant flying buses with interesting environments around them. In these photos, I intentionally include the environments because photos of just planes tends to not be as interesting to me as photos of planes with an environment. Just like a good drug cartel, it's about relationships. Like I said, I like action. So when I've taken photos uh, that lean more into the realm of like landscape photography, I tend to want to put something in it that's moving, some locomotive noun. So I recently took a visit to South Florida and while I was there, I went to Miami International Airport. Now I've discovered that Miami International Airport has a plane spotting location. This is not abnormal for even large airports, but one thing I noticed about this plane spotting location, which is something I'd never seen before, is there was something unique. And that was holes in the fence to stick your camera lens through. The place is literally called the holes. <laughs> so I went there at night and had a blast. Uh, kid this is so great i'm trespassing i wanted to capture a photo of a 747 that didn't happen unfortunately one of the things i was working to accomplish while i was there and i found it to be a lot of fun was i would follow the planes and create shutter drag on the background i did that over and over and over i also captured a couple of shots where the the lights on the planes the red lights on the planes were on and I found that that added a little something special to it as well. I always like capturing spirit planes because they're yellow. That works well for a photo. And at times I was actually working in the hole that I was shooting through as a foreground element. That's another thing is if I have a good foreground element, I like to work that into my photos as well. I think it, a lot of times it can make things more exciting. I like when I can put together these relationship elements in the environment and use a, a subframe to zero in on what the focus of the the photo is. Shooting at night was a lot of fun because of the light. You had you had the lights from the airport, you had the lights on the planes themselves. The sky was lit up nicely with all the city lights around. So that was pretty cool. I also took a couple of photos of the tower. I was able to get very close to it. Very interesting spot. Now another airport that I spent some time at when I lived in South Florida was the Fort Lauderdale airport and uh, there was a, a park that went all the way down this the side of the airport and i would capture various photos there and this one I, I paired one of those yellow spirit planes with the air traffic control tower i thought that was fun i took this beauty on a beach quite a ways away from the airport this was the loudest beach in the world because planes were constantly coming in to land at the airport <laughs> That one might be louder. But I think the airport that may have begun my plane, no, wait, there was one before. I think it was the Greenville, South Carolina airport that begun my enjoyment of airport photography. But that was a smaller airport. I don't think it would be safe for a larger plane to land at that particular airport. Anyway, I spent a lot of time at the Salt Lake City International Airport when I lived in Salt Lake City. That airport was very different than any of the Florida airports because the background was salt. There was the Salt Lake Valley and mountains. It was a beautiful landscape. Great viewing area for planes both coming into land and sometimes taking off when they would reverse the flow of the airport. And you could get right under the towers, you know, the, the approach towers. But I would take photos of these planes coming in in various weather conditions. Sometimes the sky was sunny and bright. Sometimes it was um, cloudy and, and moody, uh, you know, dramatic cloud weather. I would capture the planes from the side. I would go directly under the tower and point up at the plane coming over the tower and aligning with it. I found that Southwest planes worked particularly well in that area. The color scheme on the planes were, were nice. Fun stuff, fun, 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 fun. One time I actually captured a photo of the windows of a United flight and you could actually see the people in the windows. I thought that was neat. One time I went there in the evening and took some rather cinematic photos of the airport itself. 
and the tower. That tower you can actually see from really far away because it's a big open valley and you go up on the mountains and see the tower. You always knew where the airport. I mean, the airport's big. It's not like you're going to miss it, but it's cool that you can see the tower. One of the tallest buildings around. There was also a smokestack, though, at a, at a factory by the mountains that set some records. I think it was the tallest freestanding structure west of the Mississippi River. I remember the first time I saw it, it was breathtaking. I don't need all my subjects to move. Here's one I took from the side of a mountain of a sunset going behind other mountains. I believe that was Antelope Island. And a plane coming by from quite the distance. I also want to mention that at the airport, there was an illustration. I don't, I don't know if it's still there. That would be the most amazing airplane in Salt Lake City photo that I could ever take. Maybe one day I'll recreate it, even though I don't know it's, if it's actually physically possible. But I'll say that one of my favorite plane photos I've ever taken was this one. And this was a plane that was fighting a wildfire up in the mountains in Utah. Utah was amazing. I reminisce. It's, it was a cool spot. But anyway, you had the smoke in the foreground, very dramatic. You had the plane, planes all shadowy. The atmosphere made the plane look more foreboding and intense. And that was certainly what I felt when I was there. It was a very low flying plane. It was an intense and exciting scene. And I think I was able to capture some of that here. Uh, I love the photo. One of the things that's interestingly challenging about taking photos of planes at airports is you are restricted because it's a big place. It's often surrounded by buildings and, you know, there's a fence. Getting visual access to the airfield can be tricky and there are going to be only certain areas that you can get to and certain vantage points that you can get. Hi there. Is that your car back there? That is my car. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this area right here, well, they're approaching from the north. Your point. North, well, <laughs> Normally we don't permit scanning. This is called the ILS critical area. Okay, yeah. So uh, the ILS lighting system, we have a but well, shit. Well, since you're coming in from the north, we're fine. But if they were coming in from the south, you know, we if they had to dump fuel or they dumped fuel and they blew up, you never know you were out. Here. Sure, sure, yeah, just sure. Just keep your eyes open for another. Good, not me. <laughs> Just keep your eyes open for other units coming around because sure. they'll probably check your car. All right. Thank okay. you, sir. I appreciate right. it. Have a good night. So working within those limits is, is really interesting. Now, don't get me wrong. If I was able to, like, you know, Minecraft creative mode float around the airport, that would... That would be great, but the restriction is also enjoyable. Maybe one day I'll get to photograph the beautiful 747 up close. The queen of the skies. But anyway, that's it for this one. Hope you found it inspirational and educational. Uh, have you ever photographed a flying object, identified or unidentified? I would love to hear your thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, if you want to hit the like button, I would really appreciate that. That's what it looks like. And um, if you want to subscribe to see more of my videos and, and stuff, then I would greatly appreciate that. And I would like you. So have a lovely day, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Love you. Goodbye.